I was just taking a look at, at the Jets ETF, which really has seen a nice reversal um, of late. In fact, one month it's up 10 percent. But as you look at the headlines, you see, oh, spirit falls on disappointing earnings. Delta bleeds money after the tech disaster with CrowdStrike. And what's going on with Southwest Airlines? Is this group a good group or not so much? Your thoughts? You know, I, every now and then, it, you know, airlines have their place in the sum. But to, to start with, airlines have a long history of losing money for investors. Uh, you know, every now and then they, 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 they seem to work out. Uh, and, of course, the latest casualty right now is the board of directors at Southwest. What we're seeing there, is, it's almost unprecedented. you got seven directors, including Chairman Kelly, that will resign. And, of course, as you alluded to, all of this is being brought about by, by Elliott Management. The question now, is that going to be enough for Elliott? Well, you know, that's the whole thing about this company, right? So you have a big change that's happening. First of all, that you'll be able to get your seats. Um, Kelly steps down. There's the, obviously the fight to keep the CEO in place. Um, which names, let's back up a little bit, which names seem to have it right in the group? I mean, this one is a work in progress, it appears. Well, if you put a gun to my head and if there was an airline I was going to buy for doing things right, it would probably be Delta. Uh, I've had a good history with Delta. They're certainly more consistent. The problem with the airlines as a whole, there's a lot of things they can't control. They can't control fuel. And right now, in particular, the consumer is challenged. That's a problem for all airlines, including Southwest. Uh, we saw that in the most early, recent earnings reports for companies like in travel, like Airbnb, booking. Uh, the consumer is is stepping back, and overall, you have a you know a, a, an economy that is suspect at this point, and we seem to have lost you know one of the legs of the stool, and that that's the consumer. That can't possibly be good for airlines. And that that fuel is a wild card. That's always out there, and it doesn't take much to throw throw the the business models uh, off a kilter. Why do people like cruise lines then? Isn't it some of the same fuel and what the consumer is willing to spend? Yeah, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of the same things. I, I think for me, the problem and the distinction with airlines is kind of the history of management, what they've done over the last couple of decades. Even when things start to get better, and they will, the consumer will, will eventually repair, the economy will repair, uh, and airlines will start doing well again. They'll start making the same mistakes they've made for the last 20 years. They'll start buying back stock. They'll start buying back stock to prop up management, uh, to prop up earnings, which in tunes props up management pay. But then they're not prepared for that that ultimate setback, you know, the pandemic that hits them from out of the blue, the war that breaks out in some part of the world where you have to shut down your roots. They make those those mistakes consistently, and Southwest and all of them have done that. So at this point now, what would say to you buy Southwest Airlines? I mean, it's a work in progress. How long does it take to turn around a company? Does it seem to be going in the right direction, in your opinion? Uh, well, it, you know, I would say that, you know, given the fact that they're willing to, you know, get rid of seven, seven directors and, uh, and, and, and the chairman, it tells me that they're willing to make some pretty big changes. So it's going to be interesting to see what Elliott Management. I still question, though, whether or not they're going to accept this deal, you know, they they, they clearly wanted uh, Jordan out. Uh, they still control, I believe, about 10 percent of the votes, so they could still push for a proxy vote. Uh, but there are changes that I'm sure that Elliot has identified. And but I got to I got to believe it would take certainly certainly a year or two to even start to bear some of that fruit. You talked about fuel being the wild card for many of these transportation type stocks. Where do you think uh, the fuel price could be headed? We're going to need to see something better out of the economy. Uh, fuel price could spike, you know, from a geopolitical conflict uh, at any point, you know, sometime in the world. And given the state of affairs around the world, that could happen at any moment. But we can't predict that. Right now, fuel prices and certainly oil uh, and the benchmark WTI and Brent those are down in large part because of China is slowing, uh, certainly a, a huge consumer of uh, fossil fuels. Uh, until we see the overall global GDP print a little better than what it is, I, I suspect that uh, fuel will remain challenged. Yeah, understood. And on the big picture of the markets, how are you feeling here after last week's big sell-off, David? And then um, we got a blip of, of green, but down again. In fact, the Dow broke below 40,000. 
The SP's below 5,500, of course, trying to hold 5,400 actually to 5,439. Um, how do you feel? Do you see buying opportunities here or are you in a wait and see mode? No, no, there's always buying opportunities. But for me, you know, I'm fairly fully invested. So for if I got to buy something, I've got to sell something. So how I position my book uh, for the next few months is, is is how we make money. The bigger picture for investors right now is a lot of investors feel the Fed is behind the curve. And now it looks like 25% is the number. I'm against that. I think they need to come out of the gate swinging. They should be at least 50 uh, that's what the market would like to see, and I think the market is correct. The history of the Fed is to be incremental, and if you look over the last half century, they've only gotten it right once. There was only one time following the initiation of Fed cutting cycle that we uh, didn't have a recession that followed. That was 1984. Yeah, David Nelson at Bell Point, thank you so much. It's great to see you, David. Great really to see appreciate you. it.